So hi, everybody. Welcome along to the AppliChat Launch and Learn series. Um, today, we've got a very special guest. It's Crosby Steen, the Nomad Nurse. Do you want to introduce yourself, Crosby? Yeah, sure. Uh, you know, uh, I go by the Nomad Nurse because for years I was a travel nurse and had a little YouTube channel and uh, and uh, of, of documenting my, my travels across the country. And, uh, and I named it the Nomad Nurse. And then I ended up uh, kind of doing more entrepreneurial stuff and opened up my, my own business as a nomad nurse, as, a, as an independent travel nurse. So uh, yeah, I'm just a pretty much a, uh, a, a travel nurse. And um, hmm. that's, that's how I got the name, the Nomad Nurse. And I would, I would recommend everybody to go on the, the Nomad Nurse channel and watch Crosby's video about living in his van as a nurse. So I think that's really interesting. Right. I've seen a couple of nurses on YouTube actually doing that. They, right. they live in, like on the road pretty much. Yeah, you save a lot of money doing that too. Yeah. <laughs> so speaking of money, like the reason I wanted to talk to you was in a lot of the conversations I've been having with healthcare recruiters, uh, they're spending tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, some even millions every month on getting travel nurses in. And I really just want to get to the bottom of this and discover what's going on in terms of more and more nurses wanting to travel over permanent positions and get your opinion on that mm -hmm. so first of all um if you if you could like we have a, we have a sort of questions we want to know from every nurse the first one is what actually makes a nursing job attractive to you um for me for me personally uh there's a couple things i look at one um I, well, when a travel nurse, you got to keep a couple of things in consideration, but I look at the area of the country, believe it or not. So, you know, I like being out West. So I look at that. Second, I try to look at the, at the patient ratio, the patient to nurse ratio. So say if I'm working in a, on a med surge floor, you know, if they got a, a, a seven to one ratio, um, I'm, I know I'm going to be worked very hard versus if I work another unit and I'm getting a four to one ratio, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to rather go with that. Uh, even with me being the, in the ER. So an ER nurse, uh, I'm going to be asking what their, what their daily census is or what, what their daily patient uh, intake average is. Uh, those are the things that I, I, I look at um, to kind of help me determine, you know, you know, uh, what, what a good position is for me. So cause you're really looking at how hard you're going to have to work. I mean, that's what it comes down to is, uh, how hard are you going to have to work? You know, if you are, are, are they going to be short staffed? Are they going to have, uh, you know, are they going to have enough nurses to help you out? I mean, if you get, if you're getting slammed in the ER, are they going to have enough, enough nurses on the floor to help out? So those are a couple of things that, that, that I look at as far as looking at a position. And do you ask that question like during the interview or before you even apply? When does that you know happen? that's that's it's it's funny because you really can't as a travel nurse always do that. It depends on when you interview, uh, when you interview on the phone with with a nurse uh, manager, right? Hmm. You you need and it's usually a phone interview. That's if you don't ask that question, they they're not going to usually offer that up. So for me, I'm always asking that, being proactive and asking that question. Uh, the, the, the issue is, though, is you're being hired as a, for me as a travel nurse. Hmm. You're being hired as a travel nurse. Now, if you're a staff nurse, that's going to be a little bit different because if you're, if you're a staff nurse, that's going to be more important is understanding those, staff, those, those patient ratios, understanding how many patients you're going to see. If you're a travel nurse, you're already going in with the mindset that, hey, I'm ready to work because they're already short staff. They need mm. travel nurses. They need that help. So you you already know as a travel nurse that that you're going to be probably in a uh, in an area that is going to be needing help and you're going to be very busy. Yeah. Versus a versus a larger hospital where you're going to be a staff nurse and they got plenty of nurses working. That's more important because that's going to be your more permanent location and you really need mm. to ask those types of questions as a as a staff nurse. But as a travel nurse, I, I, t I think about it, but it's not, you know, it's not an overall big deal as much as it is as a staff yeah. nurse. I wanted to kind of make that clear too. Okay. And it does that, whenever you are looking at job ads as well, 
um, what stands out from a job ad and does it differ if you're looking for like a staff nurse and travel nursing job? Yeah, so there's money. Money money is the biggest thing for most people. Um, okay. That's going to be the, the, the eye opener for nurses because, um, you know, if, if there's no incentive to go anywhere, uh, you're not going to get you're not going to get people to go. That's it's as simple as that. That's the number one thing. Number two thing is if you're looking at an ad, um, you're looking at location. Most people are. Mm -hmm. They're looking at two things. They're looking at the money and the location. Um, and, and, I'll, and I'll be honest with you, it's changed a little bit since COVID. Um, it's changed a little bit because some of these numbers now, when you're getting uh, 7,000 a week in Montana, where I was just at, if you're getting 7,000 a week gross, and then you look in there and they're still got travel nurse jobs for 2,000 a week, you know, what's going to stand out? So, so COVID has, has changed the game a little bit as far as pricing maybe it's overpriced right now maybe it's got people looking at at things that uh at rates that usually aren't yeah. aren't normal rates you know yeah uh, but yeah so as far as like ads i think money is the number one thing hmm. that's what i think and so say you're looking for a new assignment um maybe if you can think back to when you're a staff nurse this might be better like mm -hmm. do you look on just the job board or do you look on multiple channels where are you um, searching and you searching know, that, for jobs? that's a good question because that's changed as well because now you have instagram now you have facebook you know even early on even four or five years ago you usually called a company and uh the company say like american mobile or one of these companies you would call them and then they would give you some they would just tell you where the locations were Hmm. That started changing about three, four years ago. Now there's literally, uh, I, there's, there's so many ads out there now between Facebook and Instagram and people sharing them. I mean, it's, it's endless Facebook groups, uh, travel nurse, Facebook groups are another one. Um, I think it's travel jobs or something. There's another group on Facebook. I mean, it, it's endless. You can go anywhere now versus like I said, five years ago, you would have to call the individual company and they would tell you, hey, I got an opening here in Oregon or I got an opening in Nevada or wherever. You know, that's that's how it's changed a lot. So now it's just it's just inundated with uh, with ads on uh, between Facebook and Instagram. Hmm. That's everywhere. So yeah. What's that? So there's no escape pretty much. Yeah, there's no escape. And that's so, so like if you're you know, that's there's no escape. Um but that's not a bad thing because you're constantly seeing jobs and you're seeing job opportunities out there. Mm -hmm. um, I guess as far as the marketing standpoint, you know, would be to try to change that up and see how you can stand out in an ad somehow. But uh, with it so saturated, I don't know, you know? Yeah. How, how do you think uh, like uh, say a large hospital that wants to get permanent nurses, what would they need to do to stand out in an ad to attract a traveler like you to settle down? Oh, they, they have to work really hard on that. And, and, and because, you know, I mean, I guess working on the marketing aspect of that, they, and, and, and then what they would really do, I mean, it just, it just really depends on the traveler. I think offering more, uh, more pay for one. I mean, right mm -hmm. now, right now, that's the biggest thing. If they could somehow get the message out in the marketing that, hey, we're upping the pay here for registered nurses. Um, that's the mm. biggest thing I think that would stand out as far as as getting nurses in there is is making sure that that message is relayed, you know, because at the end of the day, I mean, you, you can sit there and say, hey, we love our nurses this or we you know, you can go with all the uh, all the all the the typical stuff. But until you're paying, I mean, or, or at least messaging that getting that message out to those nurses uh that's that's what to me is going to stand out and is going to keep good nurses that at mm -hmm. the end of the day that if you want good nurses you know you don't have to pay them travel nurse rates but you have to pay them and uh and 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 keep them there and that's also going to help the uh the um patient nurse ratios because you're going to have you're going to have nurses there more you know more often yeah but the, but and then on the flip side of that, uh, the other thing really comes out to, to 
do these larger hospitals have the money to spend? Is that their priority? Is that the CFO's priority? You know, so mm -hmm. like, are they, there's a lot that goes into that. I don't know if they can do that, uh, but that should be the message as far as, in, in my opinion, how to yeah. keep good nurses at a hospital is you pay them a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And so in terms of you, like, I want to know what, why you've chosen travel nursing at this stage. Uh, you mentioned a little bit about the money. Is that the sole reason or are there other reasons that are well, important? Yeah, I mean, for, for me, it's two things. One, I'll, it, it's, it's almost the same. I, I, I don't know if I would value one over the other, but it's travel and mobility and autonomy uh, mm -hmm. to, the, to an extent. So as a travel nurse, you have, you know, you, you, only, you only take usually three month assignments. So that means you don't usually have to get into the politics of, of interperson, inter office politics. You don't, you don't, you know, you go there for three months, almost like a mercenary, you go there for three months and then you get out. Yeah. Um, and uh, that, that provides a lot of freedom. You know, you don't answer to anybody really. I mean, I mean, while you're at work, you do, but, but through your life, you don't um, money and then travel. So, you know, uh, that's the, to me, that's the, it's, it's the combo of those three things that I look for, mm -hmm. or that's the reason I was, I was pulled towards travel nursing. Uh, was because of those those three things travel money autonomy and why do you think it's becoming more and more popular generally amongst nurses I mean there's surely thousands of people like you who are attracted to it no I, I think I think money I think and I think it, either subconsciously they 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 may not say hey I like the autonomy or I like the money I like the travel mm -hmm. but I think that's why there there are a lot more people doing that now because it's all three I mean, nobody wants to sit in a in a two years in a in a staff position, getting paid twenty five dollars an hour, and dealing with politics and dealing with the with 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 the nonsense of, of politics and that, while getting paid so little, when mm. you can go travel nurse, you know, make double that, if not some cases triple that, and then don't have to deal with the politics. So mm. you have, I mean, it's a it's a clear choice. Why would you stay there unless you have? I mean, unless you just can't go away you know obviously but there's no there's literally no reason no good reason to to stay there's no good the same benefits you can get the same bit benefits with a travel a travel nurse company uh there's there's literally no reason to stay at a staff position get treated like you know not as well hmm. if i'm not if i'm going to get treated like crap i might as well go make money and travel while doing it <laughs> <laughs> but do you like do you think if we think long term is there any way that permanent employers can actually convince people of like the opposite because i'm sure there are maybe some drawbacks to traveling do you think there's any space for uh permanent employers to to sort of turn the narrative or will travel nursing just continue to grow and grow and grow i think i think it's going to continue to grow you, you're fighting i mean you to change that narrative i mean there's going to always be people that are wanting the comfort to set, stay home and not do that. You know, that's always going to be around, hmm. but you're never going to change the narrative when the money is out there with COVID going on, with all of this stuff going on, you're not going to change the narrative. You know, there's, there is no, I mean, you can try, you can throw money at it, but you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, it's like, okay, so I stay home or I stay wherever your location is, your home base, I get paid $25 an hour you know, that's, that, that's nothing these days. I mean, it really isn't. And, um, or, or I go travel nurse and make money. I mean, how do you fight that narrative? You know, you can, you can spend it all you want, but I don't know if you do, you know, like, yeah, you can do it, but you can try to do it. I just don't know how. Hmm. Unless, unless they're really going to incentive incentivize, really do it, really put their money where their mouth is and pay the nurses the money to stay. I mean, that's the only way to do it. And you, but you, you yeah. probably don't have to pay them as much as travel nurses, but you can't, I mean, you can do it, but you got to get, you got to put the money down. That's all mm -hmm. there is to it. And then, and, and that's a CFO question. You know, that's a, that's getting out of the realm. Are they going to, you know, let more doctors go to pay more nurses? Are they going to hire more NPs instead of doctors to, to keep the cost down? I mean, that's a, you know, that's a deeper issue than, 
than uh, you know just changing the narrative alone. You know. Hmm. Yeah, I, like I think what I've learned from speaking to you is, I, I so I've seen like five k or ten k. It's actually your retention bonus. So if you stay for two years, and right. that seems to be like a very tiny step compared to what you told me, where you can get like a quarter of that in a week. Exactly. I can get 7,000 right now. I did get 7,000 in Montana. I was getting 7,200 a week. So mm. what, what's the point? Like you're going to, you're going to, and then you're going to give me the bonus. And then here's this, you get the bonus, but you don't really get the bonus until you put your year or two in. Mm. Then you get the the 5k bonus. It's like, what? I, that, that's, that's nothing. That's chump change. Mm. Um, and especially after you've done your two years, you know, you got, usually there's a stipulation in there. If you get the bonus, you have to work, uh, 24 or 48 months or however many it is. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. All the ones so, I've seen you have to stay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they got the money. It's just a, a, how do they want to allocate it? Um, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the CFOs, the, the, the chief financial officers are, are looking at this now. And it's a big, it's a big thing because now they're going away from, from physicians and, and, and hiring more nurse practitioners to keep that cost down. Um, now, will they turn around and put that money towards nurses? They may have to. Um, and that's, that's, that's going to be an issue later on down the road, but it's coming. Mm -hmm. That's going to be the big, the big one. Okay. Well, certainly on certain times and I'm, I'm glad that we have you on YouTube <laughs> charting the course. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I do wish you all the best and um, let's keep in touch. Thanks for sharing your perspective and uh, I hope your journey. It, yeah, today. I, hope it, I hope it helped. I hope it gave you some, uh, an idea, you know, some, some type of, uh, you know, some, some good video at least. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think, um, so recruiters, HR people are going to be watching this. Um, if you want to send it to your CFO, feel free. Cause it sounds like, that's where a lot of this change is going to have to be made. Absolutely. That's, that's the only yeah. place it's going to be. I mean, that's, the, that's definitely it. Yeah. Okay. Well, on that, we'll see you all later. Thanks for watching.